tonight on Denver 7 News at 6. We went from heroes to zeros. Hazardous jobs putting worker safety in jeopardy every day, but one such occupation often goes unseen. I remember sitting in the bathroom for 20 minutes, just bawling. Prior to the pandemic, one in four nurses reported being physically assaulted. And now Denver 7 investigates is learning that workplace assaults against Colorado hospital workers are happening more than ever. It's absolutely something that we continue to see on a daily basis. And it's taking a toll on the workforce. I did some digging with Denver 7 investigative producer Joe Baccarelli, and we found there may be federal legislation on the way that could hopefully deter this behavior. This was my nursing graduation. For Kay DeLuca, becoming a nurse. Second career, I was 50 years old when I graduated. Meant making a difference. Honestly woke up one day and said, I wanna do something that changes the world. But DeLuca soon learned that there's another side to the job the nursing school didn't teach. I have been strangled with my stethoscope. I have been bitten, grabbed by my arms where it's left bruises. You name it, it has occurred. Then in October of 2021, during an early morning shift at Medical Center of the Rockies in Loveland, DeLuca says a patient assault put her career on hold indefinitely. He just really lost total control of himself. He was standing up at the bedside and he took a closed fist and hit me um, directly in the chest. DeLuca's talking about this man. Tori Peavy, a patient accused of punching her when staff wouldn't let him go outside to smoke a cigarette. During the restraint, I was at his head, and that is when he bit me. The problems didn't end there for DeLuca, who developed an infection from her injuries and later was diagnosed with severe PTSD. Just a lot of complications, and that really kind of took place over the past year that I have been dealing with all of that. And DeLuca is not alone. Other nurses we spoke to who asked for anonymity tell us they also experienced assaults and have been slapped, punched, and had their hair pulled. They say the problem has largely been ignored. I've literally heard people say, it's actually kind of part of my job to manage these situations or to face verbal or physical abuse. And, you know, that's not right. Jeff Tiemann is president and CEO of the Colorado Hospital Association. He says that these assaults have traditionally been underreported for a variety of reasons. Some don't want to take the time to file a report, while others are afraid to relive the experience. I think we need to encourage a culture of reporting, especially when the incidents are really significant. The Colorado Hospital Association produced a report last year stating that compared to other industries, healthcare workers are five times more likely to have workplace violence injuries. And around the country, a nurse is assaulted every 30 minutes. A survey of Colorado hospitals also showed an increase in violence against their staff in 2021 with nearly 18 assaults per 100 beds. That's up from just over 14 assaults per 100 beds in 2020. Unfortunately, those numbers are not shocking to me. They will only intensify if we do not address the national staffing shortage. During the pandemic, Tara Cosmos founded Debriefing the Front Lines, an organization that provides psychological support to nurses and other frontline workers. She believes staffing levels need to be brought up to help nurses avoid vulnerable situations. There is going to be a critical emergency and there is not going to be enough nurses to care for the patients. Nurse advocates say the lack of training is part of the problem. Recently, nurses at the VA protested their treatment and what they felt was a lack of support from management. Protect our nurses. I'm the chief security officer for UC Health. In the year that Chris Powell has been on the job, he says the hospital system has increased training for staff and posted signage in hospitals on how to handle and prevent assaults. We focus a lot of our training around de-escalation and recognition of behavior so that we can be more predictive and reactive to anyone committing violence. In the end, it may take federal legislation to make a bigger impact to deter violence. Currently, lawmakers have introduced multiple bills that would strengthen protections for health care workers. It's time that we as a nation and as a state and as a community put our health care workers up front and we link arms with them and tell them we're here to support you. We're here to protect you. That gives hope to nurses like DeLuca. Now focused on getting healthy again okay. to get back to doing what she loves, making a difference. And I still want to be a nurse and I, you know, still trying to navigate getting my health back and trying to figure out what I want to do.
And looking closer at the Colorado Hospital Association's report, it also shows that due in part to these assaults on health care workers, the state is expected to be short 10,000 nurses and 54,000 ancillary workers by 2026. Now, as for Kay DeLuca, she decided to press charges for assault against her assailant, Tori Peavy. In that case, it is still pending in Larimer County. Taking this further in depth, last year the Joint Commission, which accredits more than 22,000 healthcare organizations in the U.S., introduced new violence prevention requirements for hospitals. They include prevention programs, reporting systems, data collection, post-incident strategies, training, and education for workers. The Joint Commission also created a collection of resources from stakeholders like the American Nurses Association, aiming to help health organizations comply with the new requirements. Both the Joint Commission and experts we spoke with agree if you're a nurse or healthcare worker experiencing workplace violence, report it immediately. Go through your institution. Also consider reporting it to OSHA or to the Joint Commission.